What makes you angry? In a list of things that, that may make you angry, there's probably some things that uh, you should try to take off of there. Uh, the, how loudly your spouse chews his food, uh, how your uh, neighbor mows his, his yard, and probably not stuff that we even need to, to spend any time uh, being angry about. I, instead, we should, we should baptize that. Uh, we should remember that, that uh, sin is drowned in holy baptism and that a new man uh, that lives with Christ uh, has been raised to life. Uh, and we don't have to be angry about petty little things. Uh, Jesus loves us. We're God's own ch children in holy baptism. Uh, drown those, that kind of anger. But there's probably some things that you should be angry about. Uh, there's a lot of things that we should be angry about. We call it righteous anger. And none of us are very good at, at righteous anger. We, we don't handle it perfectly. Psalm 75 is a, a psalm that, that can help us uh, when there is something that we are angry about that we should be angry about. And that kind of anger is not something to, certainly not something to, to try to drown in holy baptism. Neither is it something that to try to suppress. Anything that we just suppress will, will come up in an unhealthy way. Uh, Psalm 75 is a healthy way to, to deal with and to express uh, anger about things that we should be angry about. And there are a number of Psalms that, that show uh, some healthy anger against evil. And a healthy way to, to handle anger is to, to pray to God. Uh, and to, to rely on him. Uh, one of the unhealthy things that we do is to try to, to do something about it on our own, to, to take it into our own hands, to, to, to get even. Um, but Psalm 75, verse 7, reminds us it is, it is God who judges. It's not really our place. It's not our place to, to decide what kind of punishment ought to be handed out. God has, has given people in, in government, for instance, the authority to hand out punishment. Given mom and dad the authority at home to, to say, no, you need to go to your room and stay there for, for 30 minutes, and then we're going to come and have a conversation. Uh, there's, there's punishment that people on earth can hand out. But if I'm not in one of those positions and I'm angry about something that I should be angry about, I need to remember it is God who judges. It's not for me to try and be some kind of cowboy and uh, make things right and, and put things right. It's not, it's not my place. God is the one who, in verse 8, in the hand of the Lord is a cup full of foaming wine mixed with spices. He, God, is the one who pours it out. And all the wicked of the earth drink it down to its very dregs. That's for him. It's hard to, to read that verse and not go to Gethsemane. And not to, to consider uh, our Lord Jesus Christ uh, praying about the cup. Uh, that cup of God's wrath against all sin. Uh, God's ang righteous anger against all things that he should be angry about. Jesus prayed about that. If there's any way, if there's any other way, let this cup pass from me. And this is the, the most healthy way to, to deal with our own righteous anger, is to not just think about it and stop there, but, but to consider Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane to consider Jesus on the cross. It's always a very simple step from real righteous anger to divine mercy and compassion. Because God has done something about all wickedness, all evil. He has done something in his righteous anger and what he has done in his righteous anger against all the things that we might be angry about and all the things that we have done that are evil, what he has done means grace for us. 
And so when I am righteously angry, I shouldn't uh, cut myself off from God and just go blasting people on the internet and, and uh, sound like some kind of Pharisee who's uh, better than everyone else and knows uh, about everyone else's uh, mistakes and how terrible these awful people are around there. Uh, when I feel righteous anger, I should move also then to compassion because righteous anger was poured out on the cross so that compassion would be poured out into me in the form of God's blood. I can be compassionate because of that compassion of our Lord and because of that I will praise his name. Uh, I will not sit and sulk and complain and blast other people and just do that over and over again and become more and more miserable about all these awful people in the world. I will move from righteous anger to divine compassion. For if I'm going to real righteous anger, then I'm going to the cross. And if I'm going to the cross, then I'm going to compassion and grace. Let's pray Psalm 75. We give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks for your name is near. Men tell of your wonderful deeds. You say, I choose the appointed time. It is I who judge uprightly. When the earth and all its people quake, it is I who hold its pillars firm. To the arrogant, I say, boast no more. And to the wicked, do not lift up your horns. Do not lift your horns against heaven. Do not speak with outstretched neck. No one from the east or the west or from the desert can exalt a man, but it is God who judges. He brings one down. He exalts another. In the hand of the Lord is a cup full of foaming wine mixed with spices. He pours it out and all the wicked of the earth drink it down to its very dregs. As for me, I will declare this forever. I will sing praise to the God of Jacob. I will cut off the horns of all the wicked, but the horns of the righteous will be lifted up. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen and alleluia. Peace be with you.